Clapton. Clapton. Running on Faith. One of the greatest unplugged albums. One so of the greatest good. albums. So good. Shout out to the big EC. <laughs> they don't call him EC, do they? Mr. Slow Hand. Slow Hand. Yeah. Slow Hand. Good stuff. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. GM. <laughs> Great Measures. Oh. Uh, gonna do Rush with this song, the band Rush. This piece is called La Via Strangiato. Maybe I said that right. La Via, let's see, Strangiato. The house, strange house. It was released on the 1978 album Hemispheres. And is subtitled An Exercise in Self-Indulgence. The song is the fourth and final track of the album, was Rush's, enti- was Rush's first entirely instrumental piece. The multi-part piece was inspired by a dream that guitarist Alex Lifeson had, and the music in these sections correspond to the occurrences in his dream. The opening segment was played on a nylon string classical guitar, The next segment introduces the main theme of La Via, the Strangiato theme. The song progresses to include an increasingly complex complex guitar solo backed by a string synthesizer followed closely by bass and drum fills. Okay. Maybe I'll learn how to speak clearly today instead of... Yeah, you know what that means, though? You can figure out what the name means. We can find out. Maybe people won't get upset with us for taking the time to look. La Via Strangiato. Strangiato. The Strange Village. Or Weird City. I kind of said that. I think you did. Ready? Italian. Uh... Are you familiar with Rush at all? I mean, I know you... I know some of the bigger hits. That's what I thought. And the washing machine deal. Right, that's right. We've had this conversation. But, I, but I've, I've never... I've, I've always sort of turned my nose up to them. Okay. Is there a reason? Getty well, Lee's voice or... I, I, sort of, but more so because everybody liked them. Oh, okay. When I was young, I kind of went against the it grain. It was cool not to... Well, I don't or know if it was, was cool was, or not. I got you. I got you. But yeah. it, but for me, I, I, if everybody said, "Oh, this is good. You should listen," to this, I'd be like, mm, "Yeah, I was good let the me, same way. let 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 me be the judge of that." Yeah. So I, I didn't even go into. But I mean, I met some serious hardcore oh, yeah. Rush fans. Yeah. And being a Fish fan, that those guys are big Rush fans and kind of come from that era yeah. of Genesis, Rush, that whole thing. Fan bases, I, I would think, have the similarities of like they are people follow Fish on tour, people follow Rush on tour. Yeah, well, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of influences from Rush and Fish. I just, uh, I just never. Okay. I just kind of went against the grain. Well, hopefully, him. this is a good introduction. And it's an instrumental. It is an instrumental. It's an introduction of instrumental. It it's is an instrumental introduction. It's an intradental. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I hear the word rush, I think of that uh, Paul Abdul song. Rush, rush. I think it's crush. No, it's rush. I think it's crush. No, uh I got you on this one. All right, we'll check it out here in a minute. Ready? Proceed, Richard.
So before we get into Rush, you were right, I was wrong. <laughs> I was thinking of the Jennifer Page song from like 98. No, nah, dude, we're talking about. Yeah, I, know, I was a decade. Yeah, off. Paula Abdul, baby. Yeah, I, yeah, my bad. My bad. It's all good. Rush, Rush. Yeah, man, that was a big song back in the day. How you feel about this one? Well, let's we'll start from the end. Okay. It ended on a strange little little note. There. Abruptly. Yeah, just da 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 da. Yeah. Interesting. So there is so much jazz and big band stuff in there. Um, that uh, there's a whole section where he's like, like, where where and the drummer. Is there a better drummer? I don't think so. Neil Peart. I mean, really? Is there a better guitar player? I mean, I know. They're a heck of a trio, for in my sure. Opinion, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you got Getty on the bass and the, and the Which keys. Which is so unassuming at the, at first. You, he only throws in a little bit of, mm -hmm. hey, I'm a badass. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he certainly throws it in there. Yeah. There's a lot of big band and jazz stuff in that song. Yeah. That... And then they, they do the whole... Uh, you know, like mm -hmm. you're seeing in my mind, I'm seeing people dancing there, you know, throwing the girls up with those frilly skirts <laughs> yeah, in yeah. there and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, that kind of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You caught it. You caught it. <laughs> um, but that kind of stuff is like, there's so much jazz and so much big band influence in that song. Mm -hmm. I heard, and then that don 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 don. That's Rush, right? Oh, yeah. The straight-up Rush. Yeah. Russian stuff. Yeah, absolutely. But also, that made me think of another song. Oh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam does that in one of their songs where they... I mean, it's a guitar thing. Sure. Usually, but... But... Then that song by them is called Animal. But, I mean, it's... Mm -hmm. Those guys are the, of the age of being into Rush. Yeah. It's just fun for me to hear how music evolves. As we're doing this, especially whenever I, whenever you notice something, I mean, you have to imagine that these dudes were kids listening to music at mm -hmm. some point, learning how to play their instrument based on that music. Yeah. Especially if they're, especially if they were, if they're, if they're trained in it, and even if they're not, if they're, you know, I mean, I know a lot of us learn instruments by listening. To the things that we like, and that's mm -hmm. sometimes why we want to learn how to play it because yeah. we like it so much. So you end up forming how you play around what you listen to. Yeah. So it's really cool to hear that, especially in musicians that don't have a. You know, there's so many times people go against that. They they try not. They don't want you to hear little bits and pieces of what makes up their. There's nothing new, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. I mean, if if we had records all the way back to whenever, there's... No, I mean, I think that there's a... And I, I'm not trying to go off topic, but I know there's an old... They found an old Egyptian inscription by this scholar, an old Egyptian scholar who wrote... Who was writing about the arts at the time, thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. saying there's nothing. We've done everything creatively. Like, there's... There, we're at a point where people are... You're seeing so much of... of the past arts in our new arts mm -hmm. will have done anything. And I mean, really, you can find, you can find, you know, we were talking the other day about, about Dr. Dre using a sample from, what was David it? McCollum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, out of this world. Yeah. You know, no, you know, you listen to the next episode and you're like, yeah, that's that. Mm -hmm. Well, no. And you find out it's from a song from 1967. I mean, he literally used that song. Mm -hmm. So, and who knows where where we we could go further back? So anyway, what I'm saying is I'm not I'm not putting shade on anybody because I think that's a good thing. I think if you can hear the history of music as we as we move along through time from what's happened before, because man, so much has already been done that's good. Mm -hmm. You could stop music in the 19 in 1960 almost and just look at everything before that and find everything that we have now something in everything that we have now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I, that excites me when I hear music, and then that song there. 
there's just a whole lot that I remember listening to when I came into jazz and big band. You know, I went through. I had that's what my grandfather and my dad took me through was was what they listened to, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of that in there. Mm -hmm. And then you hear a lot of Rush, and like I said, Pearl Jam, you know, Fish and stuff like that. You hear yeah. Rush, yeah. and, and I mean, the musicality is so good from those three guys and clean. I really so in the beginning of the song, um, the the classical guitar plays, mm -hmm. and then that which is like eighties. Mm. I mean. What is that song in Top like a, Gun? Like a sci-fi movie or something. Well, that or Top Gun. Like, dong, 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 dong. Oh, they play that on that set. Take my breath away. Yeah, they play that on that, that song, that, that same sound. Because, of course, I hear that and I'm like, mm. I love it already. Yeah. But um, I was waiting for more xylophone stuff to come in or glockenspiel or whatever it was. Yeah. They didn't do it again. Broke my heart. More right. glockenspiel rush. <laughs> but, uh... No, so what I was trying to say is I didn't know if it was the bass or the bass drum that started coming in. It was real faint at first going to do Or maybe it was just don't. I'm pretty sure that was the bass drum. Bass drum. I think because, so. because I was thinking, well, the bass drum's not very high in the mix, but it did come up a little bit in volume. But when the first time he hit his snare, I like to pay attention to how the drums sound. I'm mm -hmm. big on that. And his snare sounds great. Yeah. I mean, the first snare hit he hits, to me... Was just, it's man. The drums sound good. Mm -hmm. It's it's it's. Oh, you're almost to a great sounding song to me, from a production standpoint, or mixing or studio, whatever, recording standpoint. But then the bass drum comes in heavier a, yeah. a little later. Drum sounds so good on this. They all all the instruments sound really good. On the song, but I mean, I know that that's what Rush. That's what Rush is. Yeah. And they're, you know, they were, like you talked about and touched on a little bit, they're a huge influence on so many people that are current today and, and have been for a while. Like Danny Carey from Tool, he and Neil Peart became really good friends because Neil was such a huge influence on him. And I think when Neil passed away, I know he spoke at his funeral. Danny Carey spoke at his funeral. I don't know if it was actually the eulogy, but he... Like, got up and said a few words. Uh, Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater has also mentioned. I mean, there's countless others, but those are the two that come to mind. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I always knew about Rush. And you can't... The other thing is you could, you know, a lot of, a lot of people today... I, I shouldn't say it like that. But you could break up that song right there into five different songs. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not when it came have. out on the record... It was kind of done that way. I think it's actually 12 different parts. Oh, wow. Yeah. I believe that's how it's broken down. But since we're you know, on YouTube and streaming it... it we assume we're on YouTube. This could, well, I'm just... like We're listening to it really on YouTube going. is what I mean. Yeah. I um, yeah, I think it's 12 parts. And each part is titled. Each section. Oh, wow. Each measure, whatever you want to call it. I mean, you could... You, you, but, but it all fits together. Yeah. You know... Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what else to really to say about it. Give us uh, an idea of where to go next with Rush. Just He's talking to you. Yeah, I'm talking to y'all. Thanks for watching, everybody. We are Great Measures. That was La Via Strangiato. Not Great Measures. Shot. <laughs> By Rush. My name is Richard. This is Judson. Hope everybody has a wonderful day.